Are you listening to me? It's a question we hear all the time from loved ones, from friends. Are you listening to me? Well, the question is, are you? Are you a good listener? How do you make sure that you develop effective, active listening skills? Listening skills is the most sought after competency by today's leaders and managers. And in fact, by friends and close ones. We love friends who listen to us. We love the manager who listens to our problems and our challenges. Therefore, the importance of improving our listening skills is extremely high. It has to be one of the things that you cultivate on a daily basis. So I've come up with a wonderful formula to allow you to become a powerful, active listener. And once you master this skill, the sky's the limit. So here we go. I'm going to start with the first L, first element of that formula. I, S, T, E, N. How does that spell? Listen. Well, silent T. Listen, L-I-S-T-E-N. So what does L stand for? L stands for look, okay? Look, where do you look? Where am I looking? Um, and most people say, look in the eyes of the person that you talk to. Absolutely. But, you know, uh, looking in the eyes of someone is just not enough. But establishing eye contact definitely helps in becoming a better listener. And in my previous videos, I spoke about beware of the SP triangles. The SP triangles. What does that mean? The S triangle is the social triangle, meaning that uh, if you're in a social setting, um, what we tend to do is we, if we are attracted to someone, and, and you know, attraction can come in many different shapes and forms. I could be attracted to the person's style or the sense of humor or their intellect, not necessarily physical attraction all the time. Uh, we tend to look inadvertently and automatically to this area, is here the mouth, the neck, shoulders, and chest. Both men and women do it. That's okay in a social setting. You're sending the, the right message. However, in a professional setting, what you need to do is invert the triangle and make sure that you're focusing on this triangle to make sure that you send the right message. So look and establish eye contact. Second one is inquire. Inquire. Here we go. Let me just go ahead and choose the right pen here. So it is inquire. Inquire means is ask questions and usually ask open-ended questions. Inquire means that asking open-ended question allows the person to truly express what they have to express, their feelings. And op asking an open-ended question gives you the sort of feeling of, um, of control because uh, or, or the other person feels that they are in control because they're talking. But really the person who's in control is the person who's asking the questions. And that is true in all conversations. So when you ask open-ended questions, and you're establishing contact, you're listening, allowing the person to, to express what they have to say, um, it, it, it paves the way for a better conversation. And of course, towards the end, if you want to make sure that you want to pinpoint certain pieces of information and truly understand, you can ask a close-ended question to further uh, get to a specific result. S stands for, for summarize. Summarize. So every once in a while, Stop and say, let me see if I got you correctly. Let me see if I understood. What you're telling me is this, this, and that. Is that correct? Right? And you shake your head. And summarizing does many things. Number one, it lets the other person know that you've been listening. Number two, you make sure that you have not missed anything. And number three, it often avoids misunderstanding. I find that 80% of the time, when I summarize, I've always missed something because our minds cannot think about two things at the same time. So when you summarize, the other person can tell you, oh yeah, and don't forget about that. You say, yeah, that's correct. Summarizing is a wonderful way to let the person know that you have really been focusing and you're listening, and also to make sure that you understood. Number, uh, the T stands for take notes. Okay, take notes. 
Oh, that's obvious, isn't it? Taking notes allows you to summarize. Takes you notes, taking notes makes sure that you don't forget <laughs> later. And uh, somebody says, well, you know, sometimes I have an argument with my, uh, with my loved one, with my wife or with my husband. Can I take notes during an argument? Yes, you can. <laughs> but you need to let the person know, hey, listen, I'm taking notes, darling, to make sure that I don't miss anything and I want to make sure to address all of your issues get that approval but certainly don't sit there and get a, with a piece of pen, a pen and a piece of paper going mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not very nice so taking notes also allows you to summarize later and gives you a record of what you need to do later e stand for and i love this one is empathize empathize <sighs> i can't believe uh you know how difficult people find it to empathize. Some people. As an empath myself, I automatically connect with the person's emotions. I almost try to put myself in, in, in their shoes. And for example, empathy is really is, is emotional empathy. It's understanding what they're feeling. Uh, not to tell them, I know how you feel, but just let them know that you understand. So for example, if somebody says, hey, hi, some, I got a promotion today. I go, wow, that's amazing. I, I remember the first time I, I had a promotion and I relive that moment. Therefore, I, I am sharing the same feelings and emotions with the person in front of me. And somebody says, well, you know what? I've lost my job. And I go, oh my God, that must be horrible because I remember without having an income, that could be difficult for you and your family. So I relive that emotion with that person. And empathy, and again, is one of the most sought after qualities in today's leaders and friends and loved ones. And empathy is the best way to connect with people. Now, what does N stand for? This is a little bit more complicated. N is about to neutralize. What does neutralize mean? Now, think about it this way. Empathy is emotional mirroring. You're mirroring the emotions of the person in front of you. Neutralize is physical mirroring. Now, hear me out. Um, just an example I use all the time. Um, this happens to me often. You know, I finish my workshops in, in some country and I'm rushing to the hotel. I go to the reception and say, hey, please, could you please check me out, prepare my bill, make sure my, my driver is outside, my plane is in a couple of hours, and I'm running to the room and I'm packing my stuff and I run down to the reception. And the person has not shared that sense of urgency with me and is slowly moving across the front desk asking me questions such as, how was your stay, Mr. Halami? It was great. Is there anything else we can do for you, sir? No, it was fantastic. Thank you very much. You're great. Please, quickly. So neutralize is sense of urgency. If someone is in a hurry, act with a sense of urgency. If someone is speaking softly and calmly, drop your energy level to theirs. Make sure that you're constantly matching that energy level. Because imagine this, someone's in a really... Uh, in a lot of hurry or the sense of urgency or someone who's a bit frustrated and you're you're here well this person is going to get more frustrated because they think you're indifferent or vice versa someone who's very very uh, sort of calm and slow and you are communicating with a sense of urgency how is this person going to feel it's going to feel rushed and unimportant so there you go if you want to become a better listener make sure that you apply the listen formula formula look inquire by asking open-ended questions summarize your conversations at the end take notes to make sure you don't miss anything empathize to connect and neutralize to give value to the conversation